Well, hello everybody. This is my latest purchase. This is a Lenovo Y520. Uh, apparently this is a gaming laptop. As you can see, it's not in great condition. It's missing two keys here. There's a bit of chassis damage on the side. Um, the fault with this is apparently it is not powering on. I've plugged in a good charger into the side and we're gonna press the power button and see what happens. Okay, give it one more go. Okay, it's not powering on. Let's take the board out and have a look at it. And this is what it looks like when I scan it in. So we have already seen that we're getting no signs of power at all. So the first place we want to start is at the DC jack. And this is their DC jack on the motherboard right here. There are five pins on our DC input jack. And if you see the cable that brings power to it, which goes in here like this, you can see we have two red wires one white and two black so it's easy to see straight away that we've got our positive here our ground here and our id pin here but they're marked one and five here so it's one two three four and five let's mark those in so what we need to check first of all is if we are getting our i think it's 20 volts with these lenovos we should be getting 20 volts on our positive input here so let's check that so with my power adapter plugged in and my multimeter in volts dc I place my black probe to ground and my red probe to where my positive DC input comes in and I find that it measures 20.50 at this point. So our DC input is good. We know that we're good up to this point. We've got 20.5 volts here. So where does it go next? Well, as you can see, there's no other components around it. We can see a couple of vias here. So this is going through to the other side of the board. Now I have a schematic for this. So I'm going to introduce the schematic at this point and we're going to follow along with it. So this is our schematic here. We've got pins 1 and 2, which are positive input. And the first component we should be expecting to see in line is PF101. Now we've already found that we have 20.50 volts at the DC input. When I follow those Vs across to the other side of the board, I see PF101 here. So that corresponds to this little fuse right here. So we want to just check and make sure the voltage is coming through to this side of the board. So I introduce my multimeter once again in volts DC. And I place my black probe to ground and my red probe to the near side of the fuse. And when I place it there, I find that we have 20.50 volts. So our 20.50 volts is making it across from the front side of the board to the back side to where this fuse is. I also measure 20.50 volts on the other side of the fuse. So our fuse is good. On the schematic, after the fuse, you can see we have two inductors, PL101 and PL102, and they correspond to uh, these two inductors right here. So all we need to verify is that our 20.50 volts is making it through these inductors as well. So taking the same voltage measurement, I place my red probe to the other side of the inductor, and I find that it measures 20.50 volts. I don't think I've ever seen one of these inductors fail, and it certainly hasn't failed on this motherboard. I've marked out the path that our 20.50 volts has taken, so it's through the fuse to the inductors and there's nothing here, there's just a couple of uh, capacitors, but what I should be seeing next if you look at the schematic is a MOSFET. So I don't see any MOSFET here, I think what's happening is that we're going back to the front side of the board through these vias. So let's flip the board again and see if we can find PQ201. I flip around to the front side of the board where those vias were and as you can see it comes through here and we have PQ201. So this is our PQ201 MOSFET. So before going any further I just need to confirm that our 20.52 volts is making it through these vias and onto these pins of the MOSFET. So let's take a measurement there. I'll place my black probe to ground. I introduce my multimeter once again and I place my red probe to what are the drain pins of this MOSFET here. So any one of them will do. And what I measure is 20.50 volts. So our voltage is making it back across to the front side of the board and onto the drain pins of this MOSFET. So that corresponds to this position right here. I found a data sheet for this MOSFET just in case there was any ambiguity over what it does. It's, in, it's an N-channel enhancement mode MOSFET. It can work with 30 volts and would you believe it, 82 amps. Could you imagine putting 82 amps through this? Um, that's what they say anyway. But this is the pinout right here. I'm going to mark that onto the MOSFET just so we can clearly see where it is. So we've got four drain pins on one side, three source pins here and a gate pin here. 
Now we've already confirmed that we have 20.50 volts on the drain pins of this MOSFET. So the question is, are we getting the correct gate signal to switch this MOSFET on and allow our 20.50 volts from our drain through to our source? So I want to measure on the gate pin first. Let's put our black probe to ground, introduce our multimeter in volts DC again, and place my red probe to the gate pin. And when I press it onto the gate pin, I found that it didn't change from zero volts. I'm getting a zero volts reading at the gate pin. So that's not the correct signal. We should be getting about 24 or 24.5 volts in order for that MOSFET to be switched on. Now, if we go back to our schematic for a second, we can see our gate pin here in number four. If we zoom out, we can see that that gate pin is controlled by the battery management IC, which is a BQ24780S. So what's happening here is this IC is seeing some problem further down the circuit and is refusing to switch this MOSFET on. Now one question at this point might be, what should the voltages be if I'm deeming the voltages that I'm measuring to be wrong voltages? Well what I would expect to see on this is PQ201 should be switched on with a gate voltage of maybe about 24, 25 volts. On the source pins of PQ201, I should be getting 20.50 volts. That should be then coming onto the source pins of PQ202, which also should be switched on with a gate voltage of about 24, 25 volts. On the other side of that, on the drain pins here, we should be measuring 20.50 volts also. And that voltage is then the main power rail, and that should be sent down to all of the other secondary circuits. But as I said, in this case, the 20.50 volts is stopping at this MOSFET, which is PQ201, and it's not getting any further. This is the first gaming laptop that I've had for repair on the channel. But one thing I've noticed on other repair channels is that quite often they can have a shorted main power rail. Now, I've already identified the main power rail at PR201 right here. That corresponds to this current sense resistor here. So what we need to do is to disconnect our power, introduce my multimeter in diode mode, place my red probe to ground this time, because we're in diode mode, and my black probe to the current sense resistor. And when I do that, I actually measure 0 0.463. The main power rail is not shorted in this case. So we've confirmed that there is no short on the main power rail. Our 20.5 volts has been stopped at the first MOSFET, and I've just confirmed that the two input MOSFETs are reading okay. So what I'm thinking here is that there must be a short somewhere on the board that's stopping the battery management IC from allowing the 20.50 volts into the system. So the next check I want to do is to check all of these inductors and just see what diode mode reading we're getting on them. And just in case anybody is unsure as to how I take those measurements at the inductors, I introduce my multimeter in diode mode. We plug out all power to the motherboard place the red probe to ground and then black probe to whichever inductor you're trying to measure and on this one I measure 0 0.56 so we can mark that in on the inductor now as I was working my way through taking all of those diode mode measurements at each of the inductors I found that this inductor here PL602 measured 0 0.000 so it looks like there's a short on this rail on the schematic, PL602 is this inductor right here. And as you can see, this is on the plus three volt rail here. This is actually the switched output. The LDO3 is the always on three volts, but this one, phase two, pin eight, is the three volt switched output. And this is the rail that is reading short. As the viewers of the channel know at this stage, if we have a shorted power rail, the usual next step is to inject power into that rail and then see which components heat up and whichever components heat up is usually the shorted component. Just before injecting power, I had one last visual inspection of the board, particularly at the Super IO. I had noticed a couple of blobs on top of it, which I was hoping was either glue or just dirt. But when I scrape those off, this is what I'm looking at. Unfortunately, it looks like the Super IO has blown up. To confirm that there is a short at the Super IO, I decided to take a measurement at one of the input capacitors. So how do we identify the input capacitors? Well, I have a schematic for this. And if you look here, you can see that there's power coming onto the Super IO here. Um, that's our always on power, and that's our 
uh, switched tree bolt. So you can see that comes in on pin 26, 50, 92, 121, 127, 114. If we look at the Super I.O., pin 128 is marked here. So we can see 127 is this pin. So we can take a measurement at this capacitor in diode mode. And as expected, when I take a measurement at that capacitor, it's measuring 0 0.002. So it seems like there is a short to ground through the Super I.O. Using my hot air station, I removed the Super I.O. And using the magic of Photoshop, I'm going to show you what it looks like without that IC. So with the Super I.O. now removed, I introduce my multimeter once again in diode mode, place my black probe to one side of that capacitor, red probe to the other side. And what we find is with the Super I.O. removed, it now measures 0 0.478. So there was definitely a short through the Super I.O. The good news is that Super I.O. is available. As you can see there, the IT8227E-128 is the IC we're looking for. Bad news is, there's a circle in the top right of that, which means that it needs to be programmed. So I can't just get it and put it in. I have to get it, program it, and then solder it back in. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. It's apparently going to arrive before Christmas, so I'm not going to get near it until then. But that's my video for this week, guys. Hope you all enjoy. Uh, please like and subscribe, and put any comments or questions down below. Thank you.